Tonight, I'm talking about love, marriage, and divorce. And yes, you can save the jokes. I know I am not an expert. But I have been married and ultimately divorced. And I have practiced family law and handled my fair share of divorces. Now, when I was a baby lawyer, a legal giant told me this. He said, Ebony, I want you to take all of the love and passion that exists at the beginning of a marriage and then multiply that by 10. And that will give you exactly how much nastiness and vitriol that will show up in the divorce. And he was right. Pretty much nobody actually walks down an aisle, exchanges vows of forever in front of their loved ones and friends and likely their God, and expects to break that vow and become just another divorce statistic. And yet, that's pretty much where 50% of Americans are. And we know that when America gets a cold, Black America always gets the flu or pneumonia. Well, that works for marriage too. See, Black women, we are the only demographic where our divorce rate exceeds our marriage rate. Yes, we actually get divorced almost twice as often as we get married. Now, of course, I am not against marriage. A healthy marriage is a beautiful blessing. But the numbers reflect that I think that there's a gap in between how marriage is idealized and how marriage actually shows up. Now, from my lived experience and what I've seen my whole life in mass media, marriage is sold as a fairy tale of sorts, one where women benefit immensely and end up in a better position because of their marital status. And let me define better position. I mean better off financially, emotionally, and in terms of physical and even social status. Now, that is true for some women that get married, to be clear. But that's not mostly and certainly not always the case. See, marriage is a covenant of many dimensions. And to ignore the financial aspect would be foolish. The reality is that marriage was always about the joining of both assets and liabilities. And see, that joint venture used to always mean a fiscal benefit to women, historically, because of the times. See, back then, sexism, professional and education oppression kept us from earning. But it's a new day now. Somewhat. So women, especially Black women, today, we are superseding men in education, home ownership, and employment. So now the terms of engagement and the incentives around marriage for women, black women, they're changing. Now I'm not saying it's no longer worth it or desirable to be married, but I am saying that black women need to be very clear about what we expect when we enter marriage. We also need to know what we're willing to offer. See the same issues, money, sex, children, professional ambition, those are key issues in making or breaking the sustainability of a marriage. And I know that most of those issues are rarely or never discussed. See, we assume a lot and we tend to assume wrong. You've got to use your words in marriage. You have to say what you plan to offer and what you expect to get. And you've got to be honest. Marriage is about commitment. Love is great, but love doesn't require marriage, and marriage doesn't require love. Marriage does require commitment, and commitment to the terms of mutual agreement. So my advice, have the hard conversations right now. Are you interested in love? Maybe companionship. Do you want a partnership? Do you want commitment? Or do you want some combination of the aforementioned? That is extremely reasonable. But what I'm saying is you've got to use your words to articulate exactly which parts you want and what you're willing to give. Because the above mentioned relationship statuses, they're not the same. And in fact, they're quite different in many ways. And it's the conflation of them that leads very well-meaning, loving people to become just another divorce statistic.